Recently, I was in Eugene, Oregon for work, and as I walked around the University of Oregon campus and sports facilities, I was blown away and fell in love with the area. It is just so beautiful and breathtaking. It made me want to look into the history of Oregon football, preview the upcoming season, and dive into the relationship the school has with Nike. But before we get into this, if you enjoy college football content like this, make sure to leave a like, subscribe for more college football content like this, and comment who you want me to cover in future videos. Before we talk about Oregon football this season, let's talk about the history of the program. Oregon football began in 1894 and played its first game on March 24th that year, where they defeated Albany College 44-3 under head coach Cal Young. Young would leave Oregon football after the game and the program would then be coached by J.A. Church for the rest of the season. In 1895, they had their first undefeated season under Percy Benson. They traveled outside the state of Oregon for the first time in 1899 and they traveled to Berkeley, California to take on the California Golden Bears. They had their largest margin of victory in 1910 when they beat the University of Puget Sound 115 to nothing. In their first 19 seasons, they saw 16 different head coaches before Hugo Bezdek arrived, becoming the school's first professional coach. They received their first Rose Bowl invite during the 1916 season, although Washington won the Pacific Coast Conference that year. The Oregon football team defeated the heavily favored University of Pennsylvania Quakers 14-0, securing their first Rose Bowl victory. They would lose the 1920 Rose Bowl to Harvard, which would be their last bowl appearance until 1948. Oregon tried to establish themselves as a nationally prominent program throughout the 1920s and 1930s by luring coaches from the East Coast and Midwest out to the Pacific Northwest, but said coaches would only have a moderate amount of success. They instead found success under their homegrown coaches like Prince G. Prink Callison, who led the Webb Feet to a 9-1 record and the Pacific Coast Conference Co-Championship in 1933. Oregon would shut down football for a period of time during World War II before returning with moderate success to finish up the 40s. Oregon's 1948 team went 9-1 in the regular season and tied with California for the PCC Championship. The teams did not meet on the field that season and in a secret ballot by the conference presidents, Cal was awarded the 1949 Rose Bowl bid. Instead, the Ducks were allowed to go play in the Cotton Bowl, losing to a Doak Walker-led SMU team. They posted their worst season in program history, going 1-9 in the 1950 season, and saw Jim Aiken resign amid allegations of recruiting and practice violations in early 1951. Len Casano from Pittsburgh would be the man responsible to rebuild the Ducks program in 1951, leading them to a winning record in 1954 and playing in the earliest nationally televised college football game against Nebraska and Lincoln in 1953, winning 20-12. They lost to Ohio State in the 1958 Rose Bowl. Casanova led the Ducks to two more bowl appearances in the Liberty Bowl in 1960 vs. Penn State and the Sun Bowl in 1963 vs. SMU, before becoming Oregon's second full-time athletic director in January of 1967, replacing Leo Harris. His career record of 82, 73, and 8 marked the highest number of wins recorded by a coach at the university at the time. After Casanova's move to the athletic director, the Oregon program would start a 20-year slide under Jerry Free, Dick Enright, Don Reed, and Rich Brooks. Oregon's longest losing streak, 14 games, was set during Reed's three-year term, which also saw the team's worst loss in history, 66 to nothing at Washington in 1974. Under Brooks, Oregon finished the 1989 season 8-4, making it to the Independence Bowl, their first bowl appearance in 26 years. Brooks would achieve two more bowl games before his final season in 1994. In his last season as the Ducks head coach, he led Oregon to the Pac-10 Conference Championship and to the Rose Bowl with a 9-3 record. They lost to Penn State in the 1995 Rose Bowl 38-20. Brooks finished his Oregon career with 91 victories, and the field at Autzen Stadium was dedicated to Rich Brooks Field in honor of his tenure and accomplishments. Brooks is credited for reviving the Ducks football program. Mike Bellotti was promoted from his role as offense coordinator to head coach, replacing Brooks for the 1995 season. Bellotti was the head coach of the Oregon Ducks football team from 1995 to 2008. He led the team to 12 bowl appearances, two Pac-10 championships, and a Fiesta Bowl victory in 2001. He is the winningest coach in Oregon football history and was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame in 2014. They finished a 2001 season ranked number two in the country, defeating Colorado 38-16 in the Fiesta Bowl. He posted a 116-55 record and a 72-43 conference record, 
coached three Pac-10 Offensive Player of the Years and one Pac-10 Defensive Player of the Year award winner, 29 All-Americans, and developed a reputation for innovative offenses, explosive playmakers, and exciting games. Chip Kelly was the head coach of the Oregon Ducks football team from 2009 to 2012. He led the team to four consecutive BCS Bowl games, including the 2011 BCS National Championship game, where they lost in Auburn 22-19. He is known for his innovative and fast-paced offenses, which set numerous school and conference records. He won three Pac-12 titles and posted a 46-7 overall record and a 33-3 conference record at Oregon. He was named the AP College Football Coach of the Year and, se and won several other awards in 2010. Oregon won the Rose Bowl in 2010 and the Fiesta Bowl in 2011. Kelly left Oregon after the 2012 season to become the head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles in the NFL. Mark Helfrich was the head coach for the University of Oregon football team from 2013 to 2016. He led the Ducks to a Pac-12 championship in 2014 in a college football playoff appearance, losing to Ohio State in the national championship game. He had a 37-16 overall record as the head coach, but was fired after a disappointing 4-8 season in 2016. Willie Taggart spent one season as the head coach of Oregon, leading the Ducks to a 7-5 record, losing to Boise State in the Las Vegas Bowl. After the season, he would leave Oregon for the Florida State job. Mario Cristobal is the head coach of Oregon from 2018 to 2021. He led the Ducks for four seasons, leading them to a 35-13 overall record, two Pac-12 championships in 2019 and 2020, and three New Year's Six Bowl appearances. He also recruited at a high level, bringing in several top 10 classes and winning the 24-7 Sports National Recruiter of the Year Award in 2015 as an assistant. Cristobal would surprise some, but not many people, when he decided to leave Oregon for his alma mater in Miami after the 2021 season. Dan Lanning would take over for Cristobal after leading the Georgia defense to the national title. It was the first time the program hired a defensive-minded coach since Brooks back in 1977. Going to the 2022 season, Lanning brought in Auburn transfer quarterback Bo Nix to compete with Ty Thompson and Jay Butterfield for the starting quarterback job. Going into the season, it was believed they would have a high-octane offense, a nasty defense, and one of the most powerful offensive lines in college football. According to Vegas, they were projected to win 8.5 games. They finished year one under Lanning, going 10-3, just missing out on the Pac-12 title game. Going to this season, Phil Steele projects them to compete with Utah and Washington for the second spot in the Pac-12 title game to take on USC. Quarterback Bo Nix leads a high-powered offense, and the defense should take a step forward in Coach Dan Lanning's second year. Restocking the offensive line with four new starters is the team's biggest question mark this fall. Nix was in Heisman contention during the 2022 season until an ankle injury against Washington slowed him down. Running backs Bucky Irving and Noah Whittington arrived via the transfer portal and both returned this season after combining for 1,837 yards in 2022. Through the transfer portal this year, they added receiver Treshawn Holden from Alabama and Tez Johnson from Troy and also offensive lineman Junior Angelo from Texas and Anji Cornelius from Rhode Island. Big play receiver Troy Franklin and athletic tight end Terrence Ferguson both return as well. On defense, the Ducks added linebacker Justin Jacobs from Iowa and Connor Soule from Arizona State, cornerback Kyrie Jackson from Alabama, and pass rusher Jordan Birch from South Carolina via the transfer portal. Oregon returned 16 starters from last year's team and has the 68th hardest schedule in the nation. They host USC but travel on the road to play Utah and Washington this season. The last three Oregon coaches to have their second seasons with the Ducks have gone 12-1, 12-2, and 13-2, and 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 so expectations are high for landing this year. Expect big things from the Ducks this season. What do you think? How well will Oregon do this season? Make sure to let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more college football content. Now to close this video out, I want to talk about the relationship Oregon has with Nike. Nike Inc. was founded in 1964 as Blue Ribbon Sports. The firm was co-founded by legendary track coach Bill Bowerman and Philip Knight. Bowerman coached the famed Men of Oregon track program, and Knight was coached by Bowerman in the 1950s. Knight graduated from Oregon in 1959 with a business degree, and he believes his business life began on Hayward Field. Steve Proftane, an Oregon distance runner, is believed to be the first athlete signed by Nike back in 1974. Knight has donated hundreds of millions of dollars to the university, especially to the athletic department, where he has funded facilities, scholarships, and research. 
He's also a prominent supporter of the football and basketball teams, often attending games and cutting down nets. Nike has also been instrumental in designing and producing Oregon's uniforms, which are known for their innovative and flashy styles. The Ducks have never won the same uniform combination twice, thanks to Nike's creativity and technology. Nike has also provided Oregon with research prototypes for high-tech smart clothes, such as jerseys with cooling systems. Oregon's uniforms have become a major attraction for recruits and fans, as well as a source of controversy and criticisms from some traditionalists. Nike and Oregon's relationship is not only beneficial for both parties, but also unique in college sports. No other school enjoys such a close and influential connection with a global sports brand. As Oregon's athletic success has grown over the past decade, so has Nike's role in shaping its identity and culture. Currently, Knight's net worth is $26 billion, and he seems determined to funnel as much of that to Oregon as possible. Knight and his wife Penny are generous to the entire university, witnessed $500 million to set up a science campus. But the sports teams hold a special place in its hearts. And wallet. Nike has created player-exclusive sneakers for the football and basketball teams, and also awarded five $2,000 scholarships to Duck student-athletes whose eligibilities have expired while the university gives two $5,000 scholarships for Nike employees. Nike even guarantees an internship at its headquarters for one Oregon student each year. Bill Knight and Nike are major reasons Oregon football has become a prominent national brand, but both benefit with the relationship. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out one of my other videos right here. Don't forget to leave a like and to subscribe for more college football content. And as always, remember to embrace the grind.